follow the order of service on page 167, Divine Service 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Continue with the psalm as printed in the worship bulletin. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. To make known to the children the man your mighty deeds, and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and kind in all his works. fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. And let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The eyes of to you, and you give them their food in due season. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. when I don't do services so much that I forget where I'm at. So we're not supposed to do the, uh, the Testament, the readings right now. I thought we were going to be doing a hymn of praise. Um, so let's do the hymn of praise. And let's just do the glory, the glory in excelsis. Please stand. God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Trinity is from Exodus chapter 16. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel compelled, co complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then Moses and Aaron said to the children of Israel, <clears throat> At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. 
but what are we that you complain against us? Also Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints that you made against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses spoke to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Here ends the Old Testament reading. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle readings from St. Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning and craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body to the ed- for the edifying of itself in love. Here ends the epistle reading. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. According to St. John, the sixth chapter. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. 
When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and who he believes in me shall never thirst. Here ends the Holy Gospel. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us is from the Gospel reading, John 6, 29. Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Thus far our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the next day came. The people had seen many miracles. They ate from the five loaves and the two fish. They saw the disciples leave without Jesus, so they figured Jesus was still in the deserted place. Others joined those who were there, and they looked for Jesus and figured out, hey, he isn't here. So they headed to Capernaum across the sea, and now they found Jesus. The question is, why were they seeking Jesus? When I was at seminary, of course, there were lots of questions posed to the profs. And the one prof always had a response when somebody would ask him a question. He would say, what is the question behind the question? His point was that when people ask questions, that's usually not direct. They're trying to indirectly find an answer for something else they have a question to. When the people came to Jesus, they asked him, when did you get here? Rabbi. So were they actually wondering about when he got there or was something else behind the question? Now the average person would have said, well, I got here such and such a time, such and such, whatever. But as we know, Jesus is not an average person, is he? Rather, he is somebody who knew the reason behind the question even before they asked the question. And his answer shows that he knows the reason behind the question, where he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. The people that were seeking Jesus weren't seeking him because of his teachings, or because of his confrontation with the spiritual leaders, or even the signs that he gave. They were seeking him because they got their bellies filled. Granted, there is probably a situation going on here that we can't quite relate to, because more than likely the people in Jesus' day knew what hunger was a lot better than we do. After all, I don't think there are too many people in this congregation <clears throat> who struggle with getting enough food to eat. And I'm sure that back in those days, maybe that was a situation, a concern, you know, that they didn't have food all the time. And in Jesus, they didn't necessarily see a Messiah. They didn't see the signs. They didn't hear the teachings, but rather, they someone who would keep them fed. They were looking out for their bellies. In all actuality, are we really any different than, we, than they were? <clears throat> you know, the Lord has blessed us beyond measure in our nation. He is giving us so many blessings like food, family, good weather, you know, just blessing upon blessing. And yet, just as the people were looking at Jesus to be the one who keeps them comfortable by keeping their bellies full, Sometimes we look at Jesus as the one who keeps us comfortable in our comfort. We expect the Lord to keep us comfortable. After all, he brought us to faith and we are his children. So he must give us good things. And what happens when things go poorly in our lives? Well, then maybe some doubts can come about. You know, we may be wondering, does God really love me? Instead of seeing the abundance of what he has given us, we see the problem area. And it might only be one situation. We see misery in our lives rather than seeing the blessings. Lord, keep us away from this misery. Keep us satisfied. Keep our bellies full. Are we really any different than those people? that they were looking to Jesus just to provide them food? In fact, we can probably say that we're worse than they are because we do have so many blessings. 
but sometimes we fail to see those blessings in our adversities. And then sometimes we can doubt. We may wonder what God is doing. Why are you doing this to me, Lord? What, what did I do? There have been many people who, when things go rough in their lives, they start to doubt that God loves them. They doubt the existence of God even. In fact, I had one gentleman that I was talking to, and he said to me, you know, I can't believe in God because how can you say there's a God of love when this woman gets captured and taken hostage and is locked up for 20 years to be abused by a man? How can a God of love allow that to happen? Of course, we can't say why. We don't know why. He's failing to understand that God's ways are not our ways, that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. For us to truly try and understand God and who he is and what he does and why he does what he does is like a two-year-old child trying to understand why his or her parents are doing what they do. A two-year-old child, this does not have the cognitive ability to understand what's going on with the parents. And in the same way, we fail to have the ability to understand why God allows certain things. So Jesus, back to our reading, he tells them not to worry about working for the food that perishes, but for the food that gives eternal life. <clears throat> Jesus is here putting it right in front of their faces, is he not? You know, you're worried about getting your bellies filled, but what should you worry about? Not getting your bellies filled. You should rather worry about the food that gives you eternal life. They are to do the work of God. And what is the work of God? Is to believe in him whom he sent. So the work of God is to believe in Jesus. But you see, he's doing a little bit of play here on words, too. He's telling them the work of God is to believe in Jesus. They were asking, what can we do to do the work of God? And Jesus is saying the work of God, his work, is to give you faith to believe in Jesus. That is the work of God, and that you cannot do the work of God because you are a sinful person in need of salvation. It is Jesus who says that the Son of Man will give to you the faith. Jesus accomplished the reconciliation of the world, all sins of all times. He has made the reconciliation between us and the Father possible. He paid for each and every sin. He took away the guilt and the punishment of each and every sin. There was nothing that they did or we do to receive in order to work our way to heaven. Jesus is purposefully pointing out that what they think is work, probably work according to the law, to do the work of God. God commanded them to do the law, and by that they all have eternal life. Jesus is pointing out that's not the situation. The attainment of eternal life is not by keeping the law but rather it's God giving them faith in the one he has sent. It's impossible for man to gain eternal life. Granting faith by God is not impossible. Now it's interesting to see their response to Jesus' answer. They say, what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? <laughs> what did Jesus say? You came to me not because of the signs, but to get your belly full. And now they're asking, what signs are you going to give us? Well, he just healed a whole bunch of people. He fed them with 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. What signs are you going to give us? How ridiculous. It's like he's giving you the signs and you still don't believe. For us here today, wouldn't it be easier to believe if there were signs as well? If there were still miracles being performed? If, say, someone died and four days later they rose from the dead? Wouldn't that make it easier to believe? Because we see the signs? 
We would think so, but really it wouldn't. It wouldn't be any easier to believe. Why? Because we can't believe unless he gives us faith. And he gives us faith through the word and through the sacrament of holy baptism. So even if there were people rising from the dead, there would still be people out there that don't believe in Jesus, that don't believe this is true. Because it's only God who does his work to bring us to faith in Jesus. So even if we had miracles, if we had signs, there still would be people not saved. The word of God is only believed and understood by those whom God has called and has given them the ability to spiritually discern what his word is. The only way our faith is retained is because the Holy Spirit is with us and reaches up and holds on to that precious word of God, the, the gospel message of forgiveness of sins in Christ. Through the sacrament of the altar, he continues to grant us forgiveness, continues to strengthen our faith. That's the only reason that we can remain in faith. It's all his doing. God gets all the glory. We don't get any of the glory as we're lost in our trespasses and sins without him. So the reason the people were seeking Jesus was to fill their bellies. When it comes to us seeking the Lord Jesus, we do so knowing that we're not just filling our bellies, which he does give us food to eat, but to fill our spirits, to fill us with faith, to fill us with hope, to know that when we eat his true body and blood in with and under the bread and wine, that we are once again receiving forgiveness of sins for all the sins that we've committed, including times of doubt, including times of wondering what God is doing in our lives. So in a few minutes, we will be given that once again that precious body and blood of Christ given and shed for the remission of your sins. Through Christ we thank and praise him. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Continue with the creed, Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Continue with the prayers of the church. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we look at the miracles that Jesus did while he hung upon the cross, we know through faith that he did those as signs to show he is truly the Messiah who came to this world in order to grant us faith, forgiveness, and eternal life. We thank and praise you for having sent Jesus and bringing us to faith in him. Lord, in your mercy... Good and gracious God, when we look at the wickedness that has been occurring in this world with the purposes of opposing you, we see how you have kept us in faith through these difficult times. We implore you to continue to guide our faith 
so that no matter what occurs in our lives, we are never lost and receive the fulfillment of our faith, eternal life, and the glories of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Once again, O Lord, we come to you in boldness, knowing that you hear our prayers. Trusting in your promises, we implore that you grant healing to those who are suffering with physical and mental ailments according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. As we once again receive your true body and blood with the bread and wine, O Lord Jesus, keep us repentant of our sins so that we not only receive this meal worthily, but also receive the promise of forgiveness that you grant through Holy Communion, through you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we follow the order of service on 177, the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
true body, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of your sins, by your Christ. Shed for you. Take drink of the blood of Christ shed for you. <coughs> and now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the wonderful faith unto life everlasting. The Lord's peace be with you. Amen. Amen. true body, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of your sins. Christ shed for you upon the cross for the remission of your sins. Take drink the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the true blood. The Lord and Savior. Take drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Shed upon the cross for the remission of your sins. Take drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Mm -hmm. The Lord's peace be with you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.